Good morning. Good morning. Everybody awake? Ready to start this beautiful Tuesday? Mm. You know there's some days when you have that first sip of coffee or tea or whatever you drink in the morning, vodka, I don't know. Um, when you just you have that first sip and it's just like, oh, wow, that's so awesome. I love my coffee. Good morning, Diane. How are you? Mm. Mm. I'm just like totally up in my coffee today. It tastes extra good for some reason. So, how's it going? I understand that we've got like a lot of energy stuff going on this month. Um, and I haven't been able to watch anything for the last few days. My life has been kind of, um, kind of in, uh, um, a little bit of upheaval because my AC went out last Thursday and now we are waiting for a new compressor and so I'm like not in my normal routine and um, I haven't been doing my normal things that I do and this morning I realized you know I need to get back into my routine I might not be in my home and and in the same location but that's not a reason to vary from my routine. That serves me really well, the things that I need to do. But, um, you know, there's a lot of energy stuff going on this month. And these waves of energy that, you know, some people, that people experience different things in different energy waves that happen. Um, one of kind of feeling like, maybe kind of like I've been feeling like, a little bit of upheaval or um, not really having a clear path or a plan at the moment um, kind of living in the day-to-day -day and just dealing with things as they come um, I've had a couple of people say to me in the last week that they just kind of feel lost some days they just kind of feel lost and yeah I think I think you're not alone in that um, obviously, two different people have said that almost verbatim the very same thing. So, um, there is some energy stuff going on, and my understanding is it's going to continue through the end of this month, pretty much. And then I think it'll kind of take a, a little bit of an ebb time during um, the first part of October, anyway, from what I've heard. So, you know, just hang in there. And know that it's normal. Um, big changes are happening in people's lives. Big changes are happening. Um, <sighs> talked to one friend last night who basically has left her job and is looking for something else. And you know, times like that are so, so stressful. And even when you know in your heart that everything is perfect, is going to play out the way it needs to, it's still very disruptive to your life, to our lives. Um, just navigating through that and all of the emotions that it brings up and the worries and the fears that come creeping back out, like, how am I gonna make it? Am I gonna have enough? All of this sort of thing. So, you know, if you're going through anything like this, all I can say is you're most likely not alone. Um, and you know keep do your meditation do your best to keep yourself grounded um, I know that when I practice meditation and affirmations and hypnosis and self Reiki I keep myself more in alignment and I don't have these big woo, woo roller coaster sort of things you know it's just Kind of, you know, might be a little blip here, but you just kind of roll with it. So that's the best advice I have for that. Some people are really going through a lot of physical symptoms too. Um, almost like flu-like symptoms where you're achy all over, you just don't feel good. It's like, you know, you're not throwing up or anything like that, but it's just, you feel like you're getting sick. Um, I've had my, my adrenals have been a little bit uh, swollen this last last my adrenals not my adrenals what are these um <laughs> i can't even think of it now <laughs> but i've been a little bit swollen i've had kind of 
not really a sore throat, but kind of an irritated throat. And um, super achy. I'm super achy almost every day. Now, yesterday and today it's let up a little bit, so that's a good thing. But, you know, physically, some of these things affect us as well. So, <clears throat> just, you know, staying as centered as you can, taking care of yourself, honoring yourself, honoring the process that you're going through, whatever it may be, will help keep you a little bit more even instead of the whoop de doop -dees. Nobody likes the whoop de doop -dees. I hate them, personally. So, that said, today's chapter from The Book of Awakening by Mark Nepo is called God's Help. We don't let go into trust until we've exhausted our egos. Oh, is that true? Is that true? How hard do we like push and push and push and push to get what it is that we want and we keep hitting a brick wall and that moment that you just say, forget it, okay, spirit, if this is to be, you take it, you help me here, you gotta take over, um, and then everything's fine, right? Everything comes to be. So yeah, that, that is so true, what we don't let go into trust, we don't let go into trust until we exhausted our egos, so true. There's an old story about a man who was caught in a flood. First, he was called and told to evacuate his home. He calmly refused, saying God would save him. The waters rushed the streets, climbing the foundations of the homes. When the streets were filled, a rescue team in a rubber raft called to him, and he again refused, saying God would save him. The power of the water deepened, and the flood was crashing through the windows of his home. He was now perched on his roof. A helicopter came, and he still refused, saying yet again that God would save him. The flood did what floods do, and he drowned. On the other side, he was angry and bitterly questioned God. Why didn't you save me? I kept my faith until the end. And God, perplexed, replied, I tried. I called and sent a raft and a helicopter, but you wouldn't come. Like the thought of love, God starts in everything unseeable, but comes to us plainly in the things of this world. Hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Ooh, that's like kind of, that, that gives me some goosebumps there. Because that's just like so true. Again, it's like that. Ah. When it comes to manifestation, the part Oh, again, like I just talked about, the part that we sometimes forget is to let go of it and turn it over to the universe, you know? Um, yeah, it's okay. You need to visualize these things and, and to have clearly defined goals and have a vision of what you want to create in your life or for yourself in your own healing, your own process, whatever it may be. And then once you have all that together, you have to let go and ask for help. Let spirit, God, um, the deities, um, the universe, whatever you like to call it, I'm okay with any of those, um, turn it over and let them handle it. A lot of people work with angels, they give it to the angels. Beautiful, beautiful, just give it up, that's a big thing here. But we also, along the way, you know, we ask for something in our life and Spirit says, okay, here you are. And we're going, no, that's not what I think this looks like. Or we just totally overlook it or just put it aside and don't really honor and recognize the gift that's being given to us. And we go on and we go on and we go on and we happen over and over just like the man in the flood. And you know, then it's like, well, I tried to manifest this, I put this out there and I let go, but it never came to be. Well, how many signs have you missed along the way? I had this driven into me very deeply um, just recently. When I put something out of something I wanted to manifest in my work 
and you know almost immediately knock on the door from spirit here you go and go well let me see let me check my schedule no i really no i can't really do that today i need it and then it hit me and i thought carrie you asked for this this is exactly exactly what you asked for and now i'm trying to go oh but i need more time to do da 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 I'm saying. So, who? Okay. I hope this is recording okay. I just got a little thing saying low network connection. So, I'm on my mom's Wi Fi. I should probably take it off Wi Fi for this because um, it's a little bit wonky here. So. <laughs> um, but anyway, <clears throat> we have to answer the call when Spirit says, okay, here you go. We can't be going, oh, but maybe that wasn't exactly, or maybe I don't want it like right now, this very second, I don't know if I'm ready. Oh, bullshit. I call bullshit. Step up. If you put it out there and you ask for it, you step up, you pay attention to the signs, and you go with it. You just go with it and see what happens. See what happens. See how it unfolds for you. So... Speaking of manifesting, this is something that my partner uh, Sandy and I talked about last week. Um, vision boards, the power of vision boards. Have you ever done a vision board? It's incredible. It's incredible. Um, I did a vision board three years ago when I was uh, in my life coaching courses. And I still have that vision board. Everything on that board has come into fruition and in even bigger ways than I ever could have imagined for myself, except for one thing. There's only one thing that was on there that did not, that has not, at least yet, come to fruition. And that was, I had a picture of a house in Agritopia, which is an area here in Gilbert that I just, I love. I love the old craftsman style houses. And um, you know, it's, that's the only thing that has not happened. Um, but, or should I say, and, perhaps it's more of a lifestyle that I'm looking at from that house instead of like the actual house itself. Um, and you know, still, it's not quite here yet, but you know, the, you have to keep, what I'm saying is you have to keep yourself open to different things that these might really represent because sometimes it's not exactly that. Like, you know, things on there, I mean, I had like pictures for life coaching and then I've got into the hypnotherapy and it's like, oh, I love hypnotherapy. And those photos that I put on my vision board for life coaching, actually were more representative of hypnotherapy. So it's kind of interesting. Sometimes what you know you think it is that you want on there, um, it may not look exactly like that, but that's where you let go and you say, you know, manifest this for my highest and best good, however that may look. So Sandy and I were talking about vision boards the other day because she's had great success with vision boards too, and I'm ready to do another one. I'm ready to do a new one. And uh, a friend of mine, Becky Spone, and I um, have a workshop, a vision board workshop, that uh, I think I need to talk to Becky and with Sandy, and maybe we can get something put together. You know, we talked about doing it first of the year, because that's when everybody's putting these things into place, but I think it's actually more important to do it before then. So I'm thinking like maybe mid-November to mid-December, we'll get a workshop put together. And so if anybody has interest in that, please just give me a, um, send me a message and let me know. And I really think we need to get something like that together because it is, vision boards are very, very powerful manifesting tools. And uh, we'll, you know, keep it at a very reasonable cost for everyone and um, just have some fun and do some group manifestations. So. Um, anyhow, and, and Becky and I also will come to, like if you want to have a home party and have some girlfriends over and do vision boards, um, 
will come to you as well. So you can reach out for that and uh, we can make that happen. We bring all of the supplies. We bring all of the magazines. We bring um, affirmations. We bring tape and glue and scissors and pens and all that stuff. So anyway, um, let us know if you have any interest in that and I'll keep you posted on the development of that as we get that put together. So, okay, stop rattling. You guys have a great day. It's Tuesday. Go and have fun today and uh, do your work honestly, like one of the Reiki principles. Do your work honestly, okay? Love you. Peace and blessings.